So a while back, my family and I went to a family swim time at our local gym. Uh, we love to swim as a family, and uh, at our gym, they have this nice big pool. It's never very crowded on family swim days, and so, uh, you know, we packed everybody up. We went and, and had a blast. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we love, love, love swimming. And so the kids are having a blast. My wife's having a blast. I'm having a good time. And it occurs to me that, you know, maybe I should document some of this. You know, maybe I should take some videos, some pictures, just so that someday I can remember this really, really great day. Um, and so I grabbed my phone and I'm starting to take pictures of the kids and everything and then it dawns on me I remember that I've got an iPhone 7 which one of the biggest things that they changed between the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 7 I, I believe um, was that uh, it became water resistant or even kind of waterproof so to speak and uh, I get my phone and I, I'm taking these pictures and I climb into the water and I have it and in the moment that I'm about to put it under the water, I have this this sense of terror that hits me. It was unexplainable because I heard what Apple said at their rollout. Uh, I remember seeing the advertisements, and I believed what Apple said to be true. But there was this moment of hesitation, of doubt, when my my faith in Apple uh, had to had to go into action and had to be proven through what I did. Because if you're anything like me, you've grown up uh, you know, over the last several years with iPhones that have been damaged or destroyed by water. You know, you always hear these stories, people die, dropped it on the toilet, or you know, I, I, I you know, got pushed into a swimming pool or something, and the, it's ruined. And so all of that baggage and all of that you know, past kind of came into play as I'm trying to take my, my, my you know, phone into the water to get some really cool pictures of my kids and my family. I ended up doing it. Uh, I ended up going ahead and submerging it, and I've got some of the coolest pictures and videos of my family swimming. It was, it was great. But it caused me to reflect on this relationship between faith and works. You see, the Bible was actually kind of uh, um, seemingly split on this idea. If you read in Romans or in Hebrews, it'll say things like, you know, it is faith that saves you. Faith alone is what saves you. It is faith in Jesus and his redemptive work on the cross, dying and raising from the dead, paying the sacrifice for sins that reconciles us to God. It's nothing that you do. Uh, you know, uh, Hebrews talks about all these people, whether it was Abraham or, or you know, um, any of the others that, that were justified by their faith and that faith alone saves you. But then you go to James, and in James, it seems like it says exactly the opposite. It seems like it says that it's not just faith that saves you. It says, you know, you say you have faith, I have works. You show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. So now it seems like there's this contradiction, unless you, you understand it. I remember someone taught it to me a while back, and it was, uh, it was kind of a transformational truth for me. And Dave Wilson probably is the one that said it better than anyone else that I know, and he said this, that faith alone saves you but faith never travels alone. Think about that for a sec. Faith alone saves you. It's faith in Christ that saves you, but faith never travels alone. One speaks to the, the theology of, you know, it's Christ alone that saves you, but the other speaks to practicality, which is the truth that faith, real faith, never travels by itself. It's always accompanied by action. And that's true in every aspect of our lives. You know, we say we believe something, but uh, it was Andy Stanley that actually said this, that if you want to know what people mean by what they say, watch what they do. That is a transformational statement that has really kind of affected me since I heard it, and it's the truth. You know, we say we believe all sorts of things, that we have faith in all sorts of things, be it religious or non-religious, just in life, but if you want to know what you really believe, what you really have faith in, it comes down to what you do. You know, it's one thing to say I have faith that this, this phone is going to last in the water. It's another thing to submerge it and see what happens. And I ask myself the question so many times now, and I, I ask you the question right now. What is it that you say you have faith in, that you say you believe, that you say is truth in your life, that your actions tell a different story about? You know, where is faith not backed up by action in your life? Maybe it's financial. You know, you say, I believe that this is the path that my finances should follow in order for me to live a life that, say, honors God. Or if you're, if you're not a religious person or, or a spiritual person, you say, just to get to the goals I want, and yet your actions don't reflect it. Or your fitness goals, or your health goals, or your, you know, your nutrition goals. Whatever goals you might have, you say, this is what I believe, this is what I put my faith in, but then your actions don't reflect it. And what might need to change in your life that your faith and your actions travel together. 
If you like this video, like it, comment below. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, look forward to talking to you again.